Hi everyone, in this lecture we will discuss how you can use the inbuilt sort function provided by C++ algorithm header file to make your work easy while doing questions online, okay? So it's not required that every time you want to solve a sorting problem you have to write your own sorting function. What you can do, you can take help from a sort function that is already available with the C++ standard template library, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is you need to include this header file called hash include algorithm and this contains a sort function. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to take input a array and then we are going to sort it using the sort function. So the sort function uh, accepts uh, multiple parameters. Okay, so let's talk about the first parameter is the starting point of the container. Okay, so we will not call this as the starting point of the array, but it can be a container. Okay. So when you uh, work with the standard template library, a uh, container can be anything, okay? It can be an array, it can be some other data structure like vector or anything, okay? So what we will do, we will say we are going to sort an array in the beginning. So the starting point of the array will be the starting address of the array, okay? So this starting address of the array is A. And another parameter that you should give is from what position to what position you need to sort okay you need to give start and end and remember when you call this sort function the starting point is included and the ending point is excluded which means if you want to sort this complete array the last index although is uh, array plus n minus one but you actually have to give this particular index okay because this index is not included so if you want to sort an array from this point to this point you have to give the start as a and you have to give the ending point as a plus n and let's try to sort this array using this sort function okay so let me say the starting point is a and the ending point is a plus n and this will actually sort the entire array so uh, we have not defined this sort function this sort function is already defined in this header file called algorithm and it's much more uh, efficient than the basic sorting algorithms like bubble sort selection sort insertion dot that we have done till now and maybe in some time later we will also talk about other sorting algorithms like merge sort quick sort so this sorting algorithm uh, is quite efficient in terms of time complexity so you should prefer to use this sorting algorithm instead of writing your um, basic sorting algorithm such as bubble sort okay so let's try to run this and let me just call this as inbuilt sort and let's say we have six elements and the elements are six five four let's say one two three so you can see we are getting the correct output and it's not like that uh, we can sort elements always in the increasing order we can also sort these elements in a decreasing order so for that we need to do one thing we need to define a comparator function okay so we have to define a comparator function here okay so what we will do uh, we will have a function bool compare that actually compares two integers okay so we, it will uh, tell the sorting algorithm how do you compare two integers so what this uh, compare function will do i will tell you let us first pass this compare function okay so here we are not calling the compare function here we are uh, sending a function as a parameter to another function okay so this is something uh, different that you have not seen till now in the course so sort function is accepting another function that basically compares two numbers okay so i will explain you what this thing is going to do and let me just first run this code and let me see there are five elements one two five four three and you can see we are getting these elements in the sorted order but suppose if i reverse this comparison i say okay return true when a is greater than b okay so let me say five elements one five four three two and this time you can see the order in which elements are appearing has changed completely so instead of doing an increasing order we are now able to sort the elements in a decreasing order so we actually have to understand how these comparators work so let me uh, go to example of bubble sort where we have done something like this okay 
okay now suppose this is bubble sort and uh, this is the logic of the sorting algorithm so what we can do in this logic we had written uh, one if condition we, we we have we had written if uh, aj is uh, aj is greater than aj plus 1 then we will do the swapping okay so such a condition will be always there in any sorting algorithm for example if 4 is there and 5 is there and if you want to bring this 5 here you will say okay if 4 is less than 5 then swap it or if 5 is greater than 4 then swap it okay so something like this you you will have in every sorting algorithm so what you can do instead of fixing this comparison logic at this point what you, you can do you can just make another function called bool compare and the goal of this function will be to accept two numbers a and b and it will just compare uh, when to return to okay so you will say okay if a is greater than b in that case you return true or if b is greater than a in that case you return true so if you just change this uh, execution of this particular if statement you can actually change the order in, in which the elements are getting swapped all right so what we are trying to say the sort function is something very similar to let's say bubble sort and in, inside it it has a if condition and instead of directly writing a comparison at this condition you can just say if uh, compare uh, aj and aj plus 1 you, you you will do the swapping okay you will do swapping if this compare function returns true so what we, we are trying to do in our case is we are fixing this logic outside the sort function and that sort function is internally calling this compare method to compare two elements okay two elements of the array so if you want to actually see this function is getting called multiple times you can put a see out statement here and you can say comparing uh, a and B okay so let me run this code now and although we have not called compare function anywhere till now we have just passed this function as a parameter okay so this is uh, we are passing the function name as a parameter to the sort function okay so this is what we are doing and this function is called internally so internally in this sort function you will have something like this if uh, compare a comma b or a i comma a i plus one then do the swapping okay so this is going to be called internally so let me show you and if it is called internally then you will see this c out statement multiple times the number of times this compare function is called internally by the sort function so let us try to run the code and let me say the elements are 5 4 3 and you can see the comparisons are happening okay so these comparisons are uh, done internally and what we did is we just modified the order in which the sorting function is going to produce an output by sending it one more function that is the compare function okay so I hope you got a little bit idea how to use comparators and this is very useful when you want to compare strings, when you want to compare different type of objects, maybe you want to compare numbers based upon number of digits a number has. Okay, for example, if you have a number, let's say 1199 and you have a number called 199, you want to say, okay, this, this number has four digits. I want to uh, put those numbers in the beginning that have more number of digits. Okay, then you can write your own comparator function that makes the comparison based upon number of digits in a number okay and we will see more examples in coming videos so i hope you got a brief idea of how does a comparator function works